Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher's Circus. Today we are going to be playing once again against Sabakas, Sabakalechik. We've played against him before in the past, like uh, probably a couple of videos ago I'd say. And it looks like today he's bringing the WD team, so it's this very aggressive mark team, having the Bounty Hunter and the Arbol Synergy as well as the two stunners in the front line. While I have something quite interesting to say the least, yeah, quite quite interesting. I myself am bringing kind of a, a Vestal Mark setup, you know, obviously still having the Arbalus Bounty Hunter, and then the Vestal, but instead of having a Crusader in position 1, I actually have a Flagellant with the Eerie to give him some accuracy. So it's definitely quite an interesting setup, and I'm gonna try to, to make it work, see if it actually works against probably the best Mark team in the Butcher Circus. Yeah, most likely the best Mark team, actually. Um, you know, the WD is just way too strong. Having that abomination with uh, both the stump trinkets is also potential to just go transform slam like he just did. It is it is absolutely insane how strong that team can be. Okay, now the question is, who should I stun? Should I stun the Arbos or should I stun the, um, the Crusader? I feel like stunning the Arbos here might be a little better. Or maybe the Crusader. Now let's stun the Crusader, actually. Let's prevent him from going Holy Lance and repositioning the Arbos. Yeah, let's do that. That, uh, that might just be better for us here. Now, both the bounty hunters are totally out of position at this point, which is nice. <laughs> it's definitely very nice for us. Oh, that his bounty hunter is out of position. Yeah, this is quite a, a weird uh, weird situation here, because I can't really go Polo because I might actually knock him back, so I'm going to have to go with uh, Reign of Sorrows first. It looks like neither of the Arbolts are going to shoot this round. Uh, should I go for Reign of Stars? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, that's a good crit. Yeah, that is a good crit. Ah, oh, still no bleeds. That is really unlucky. You know, we do have this Eerie Eye instead of like the Crimson Hook or the Hemlock to do more DOT, but uh, the Eerie Eye is giving us some nice accuracy and uh, even an Ignore Stealth, which could be useful. But yeah, it's it's not perfect, it would seem. Um, I'm thinking I sh if I should either move back to positions or if I should go pull. Honestly, Ball is gonna have like a 35% chance of knocking back that Arbalist, and I do not want that to happen. I'm just gonna move back here and hope that his pull doesn't go through. It is a 75% chance, and I'm really just hoping that uh, he doesn't manage to actually get that come hitter through on my on my Arbalist. Though he is playing this like absolutely amazing, he went for that initial slam on my Bounty Hunter, and right now by the start of next round he can go for another slam on my Flagellant, and then the Flagellant's going to be out of position, the Vestal's going to be out of position. This could be this could be quite good for him, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's really going to be a a neck and neck match between the both of us right here, I'd say. Yeah, he does get that pull. Ah, that is unlucky. That is unlucky. That I guess that pull. I mean, it is a seventy-five percent chance. What can you do? Hmm, I'm honestly thinking that my best play here, and hear me out on this one, is actually just stunning that Crusader again. It's gonna be an 80% chance. Oh god. Oh, that is not what you want to see. So this Vestal has both the stun trinkets, so it has 150% stun chance against the 70 res, and we just fail the 80% stun. There is no justice in this world, guys. There is no justice in this world. We did not get that stun on the Crusader. That's gonna be a come hither on the Vestal, really? Really now, that is interesting. That is an interesting play. Well, he just gave my Arbalist um, a shooting position, honestly. Was that the best play for him, I ask? Mm -hmm. Well, and he can't really shoot me at this point, but he's definitely gonna go Holy Lance, so watch out, Shep. Do watch out. I'm gonna go for my flagellant action first because he is gonna go Holy Lance, and after he does that, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull the Arbol again because I don't want her to shoot. Okay, now this should get a few bleeds, right? Oh, we actually get a bleed on the Crusader and not on the Bounty Hunter somehow. Yeah, don't ask me. We did have that plus 20% bleed chance from getting the crits earlier, so quite happy that we did get that bleed on the Crusader. It's gonna be some DOT being applied. He's gonna go detransform stun on my Arbalest, I'd say. Yeah, good play, good play. He does have both stun trinkets, so that is that is a more than confirmed chance of getting it. Yeah, more than confirmed chance, so we're just gonna click there. I'm thinking maybe I could go Caltrips, but I honestly think that would be a little too slow. I have to... He has to go Holy Lance now, and after he goes Holy Lance, I just have to pull that Arbalest again, because I can't let her shoot. I 100% cannot let her shoot. Okay, he's gonna go Holy Lance. That Crusader should not have had that action, by the way. It just really sucks that he did. 
really, really sucks that he did. I'm gonna go for another pull. He's most likely gonna drop a bullet here, which could be great for us if it no if it drops the vessel back. It's gonna be a 65% chance because Bola only has an 85% knockback. So it isn't yeah, the chances are always very chancy, and I'm hoping that it doesn't knock the files on back. That would be an absolute disaster if that actually happens. You know, the perfect outcome for us would be Ooh, he's gonna go for a flare. Oh, he's gonna go for a flare, huh? Interesting play. I guess he's fine with staying at that position then. Hmm. Well, in that case, he might actually just transform Slam and then go Holy Lance at the same time, uh, you know, after the Slam, so the Arbals goes back in position. So I'm thinking of going Caltrips here, but at the same time, I'm not too sure that's the play. I'm really not too sure that's the play. I'm, I'm gonna go for quite a weird move here. I'm gonna drop a Reign of Sorrows first. It is quite a weird move. I'm just hoping to get some DOT through. Oh, that is both bleeds. Oh, there is justice in this world. At long last, the Crusade, the Flagellant gets both his bleeds through with the Reign of Sorrow. So that's going to be a bunch of DOT being applied to his now backline before, like, his front line. Yeah, this is quite a good situation for us, honestly. The Flagellant is just doing work. Oh, that could fail. That stun could fail. No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't. He only has 135% stun chance with those trinkets, so I was kind of hoping that would be a failure, but uh, I guess I guess not. Hmm. Yeah, I have an idea of what he wants to go for here. Yeah, he wants to go Holy Lance and then get a death blow with Caltrips or come hither, which I am 100% not gonna enjoy if that actually happens. But uh, the Vestal can't really heal at this point, so I'm gonna go for quite a weird play. I'm gonna drop a Caltrips here. Because I feel like I'm gonna have to just attrition him out at this point, because he's definitely gonna go Holy Lance and he's definitely gonna go come hither or Caltrips, and I don't really have a way of stopping it at this point, because my vessel got knocked to position one. That really sucks that she's in position one right now. I could click to this guy, or I could. Um, this guy, I mean, the Arbalist. <laughs> or I could move back. Um, what should I go for first? I'm gonna click the R, we'll see what happens. Because if he does decide to go for a come hither and doesn't get the... Uh, does get the pull but doesn't get the death blow, this could actually be amazing for us. Yeah, this could actually be really, really nice. Okay, he's gonna go for it. Uh, Caltrips? Caltrips might not do enough damage, actually. Ah, oh, that is unlucky. That is unlucky that he actually rolls for enough. Whenever I use Caltrips, I don't even... I don't even do one damage with that ability. So I am... I am kind of sad here that that's what what happened. I'm gonna move back with the vessel so I can do more stuns and uh, also potentially heal. But yeah, this is not a perfect situation for us because our flashlight might be doing very well right now, but now that we have a character disadvantage, do we have, do we really have all that much to show for it? Mm, kind of, not really. Yeah, I mean, we have some nice bleeds and a little bit of stress and a lot of damage on that Crusader, but is it really enough? Is it really enough is the question, and the answer is Probably not. I'm gonna have to stun that uh, that Arbalist, honestly. Yeah, that's gonna have to be a stun, but right now he has two stunning characters, so... Oh, this team, it's so oppressive, because he's gonna go stun on the Vestal, he's gonna go stun on the Flagellant, and then my Bounty Hunter is just, like, being a, a weirdo here in positions for... Oh, that really sucks. Okay, the Arbalist died round three. We're gonna remember that if we actually want to have a chance of winning this match, but... Oh, that Crusader is taking some damage. That Crusader is taking some damage. That could be that could be our saving grace, honestly. If the Crusader manages to, you know, just fall to that storm, maybe we get a good death flow through. Oh, that would be perfect. That would be perfect. I'm just gonna click the flash on here, honestly. That's that's totally fine. I'm gonna react to what he does with my bounty hunter turn, but most likely I'm just gonna move forward so I actually have a chance of getting a death flow. Though keep in mind that yeah, that there goes my <laughs> there goes my vessel turn. So yeah, exactly what I said would happen happened because it it's the best play for him. I have two choices here: either I move forward so I can actually potentially get some death blows, or I pull that arbalist again because she's gonna have an action next round. And between all the healers he has, this is this is atrocious. So I'm actually just gonna pull the arbalist here because I would like moving forward, but ah. Oh. The 75! Oh, what is this game about? We don't get that pull. Grappling mids, you're disappointing me. I am disappointed in you, grappling mids. Yeah, that is not a really good outcome for us. That is really not a good outcome, but... 
we can still go first next round and potentially just drop a come header on the on the arbalist anyway. Another thing that really sucks is oh he's actually gonna go mark for death. Wow he is greedy man, greedy man. Capitalizing on me getting unlucky. <laughs> wow. Well I'm gonna pull him again. Hopefully it works this time. Okay there we go. Second time's the charm it would seem. Ah, uh, but the Arbalist is still in a position to pull, uh, oh, that Crusader. Okay, he won't, um, he'll have a harder time getting stuns now, because I do have a bunch of stun res now. So this could be pretty decent for us right now. Yeah, this could be pretty decent, honestly. Just gonna have to see how the RNG rolls, because if he starts failing some of these stuns, I could have a really good time here. Okay, that's gonna be a bowler. Uh, that is not perfect. That is not perfect, but it could be worse, I guess. No, that could be good, actually. That means that the, the Crusader can't really stun me anymore. Can't really stun the Vestal anymore, so that could potentially be good. Yeah, I'm gonna click this Vestal, right? That's what we're gonna go for. Because that's what makes sense. Or I could go for an action with you and drop a Reign of Sorrows. That means I'm gonna get stunned. Stunned. Uh, every play is dangerous. Because if I do this, I get stunned. If I go Reign of Sorrows, I get stunned. <laughs> Every play is just is just a stun waiting to happen. Ah, oh, this damn team that Savak is playing it. Yeah, it's it really is. It really is quite strong, and he's playing it pretty well as well. He has the exact setup that I use, so that's a good starting point, honestly. It's a good starting point. He might go slam. Does he go slam though? The thing is, if he goes slam, he activates my healing, and he also makes it so the bounty hunter is back in position. Okay, he is gonna pull that Vestal. Okay, that is that is a play. That is a play. He could just drop a redeem here, and I will. I will just drop a redeem because oh, that's a good crit. That is a good crit. So that's both my characters back up to full HP. So we're gonna be able to tank a few more stuns, hopefully. And also, he could actually just fail that stun. He doesn't have a confirmed chance. Remember that 80% that we failed, like, round two? Come on. Come on, give me that stun resist. Ah, there is no justice. There is no justice. I hate it. I hate it. And he's probably gonna get the manacle stun as well. Come on, go for it. Go for it. Get that, like, what is that? An 80%? Yeah. Oh, my man. My man. This, uh, this game with the RNG really is insane. Yeah, it really is insane with the freaking RNG. Hmm. I have a feeling that he might just want to move forward though, or something of the likes. What does he want to do here? Honestly, what does this abomination want to do? I don't know, because he doesn't really want to go slam on that Vestal, that's for sure. And, oh, he doesn't actually get the stun, okay. Okay, there is, there is a touch of justice in this world. <laughs> There is a touch of justice in this world. Uh, I'm gonna keep my keep my come hither action for a bit. Remember, the Arbol died round three, so by round eight, the bounty hunter is gonna be repositioned exactly where he wants to be, which is in position three. So I, I can't wait for that to happen, honestly. Cannot wait for that to happen. The scorch just needs to go away, and everything will be so much better for us. Because once that happens, we might actually start getting some death blows, and the bleeds are catching up with him. Somewhat. They are somewhat catching up with him. Okay, just goes for another stun. Maybe resist number two? No, we don't. There is no resist number two. Hmm. Okay, this is weird. This is weird, because I... Uh, oh, the, the Arbalest Corpse. I can't go for pull. I can't really go for a mark of death here. Yeah, the Bounty Hunter is just useless right now. I could move forward two positions into a stun. Ah, is that really what I want to do, though? <laughs> Just move forward two positions into a stun? No, not really. I'm gonna go mark for death on that bounty hunter, because I honestly can't see any any better plays. I honestly can't see any better plays, because I can't go for a pull on either of them, because that would, that would uh, make his game a lot easier. I can't move forward, because I'm gonna get stunned. And even if I move one position forward, then the flagellant is just gonna move next round, and so it's gonna be meaningless. So, yeah, this, this position is just so weird. It really is so weird. Okay, Bounty Hunter is acting... What does he do now? He also He's in the same situation, he also doesn't want to pull, but moving forward for him isn't that bad. I mean, okay, his Abomination going to position 4 is still pretty bad, but... 
Yeah, he just decides to go for a mark there. Though the mark is going to be a lot more useful for him because he still has an Arbalest, right? He's probably just going to move two positions back right now and um, and go for another stun on my Vestal. And he's going to be he's going to be chilling, honestly. He's going to be pretty much chilling here, which I 100% don't appreciate. Oh no, he's going to go all out. Oh, that is risky. Oh, that is. Oh, okay then. Yeah, that was risky. He should have moved two positions back. He could have moved two positions back with the Arbalest. Come on, resist. Come on, resist. Come on, resist. Unlucky. 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 Well, I can't let him shoot, right? I still can't let him shoot. That corpse is gonna go away next round. Yeah, it's gonna go away. So the next action that my Bounty Hunter will have, he'll be in position 3, which is great. It's totally great, because this Crusader is gonna fall to death door, so he can't go stun right now. So, yeah, that Arbalest ball was just absolutely godly. He managed to knock back both the Corpse and the Vestal and put my Flagellant back in position 1 and my Vestal back in position 2 and make it so I can just pull him right back to position 1. So that was that was a really, really bad play by Savaka, but uh, yeah, it does happen. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that happened. Okay, we managed to resist that stun as well. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is good. This is quite good. I'm thinking of... Um, hmm, do we want to go Reign of Sorrows first, or do we want to go Pass first? Because Reign of Sorrows is good here. Hmm, but then I'll be in danger. Will I be in danger? Kind of, not really. I'm gonna go Reign of Sorrows here. Yeah, I'm gonna go Reign of Sorrows first. Just to apply some DOT on that Bounty Hunter. Ah, we fail. We fail the DOT, unfortunately. We do get it on the A-bomb, but honestly, it's kind of meaningless. Because um, by the time we actually have to kill that A-bomb, if we manage to kill the Crusader and the Bounty Hunter, then it's going to be kind of meaningless by that point, honestly. Potentially, you know, getting bullets is better than not getting bullets anyway. Okay, that bullet could do enough damage. Oh, it's a crit. Oh, it's a crit and a normal knockback. Oh, that's not good. You might just get the death flow here with that um, with that uh, bounty hunter now. Yeah, he will most likely get the death flow with that uh, bounty hunter. Hmm. Mm, that's gonna be a come hitter. We survive. What was the chances of that happening? Wow, that is unreal. He doesn't go for a heal right now. I kill him. He doesn't go for a heal right now. I kill him because the corpse is gonna go away. He doesn't know. He doesn't know when the corpse is gonna go away. He isn't counting. He isn't thinking about it. He doesn't know when the corpse is going to go away. Oh my god. Yeah, it's going to go away after he acts. The corpse goes away and then I just get a death blow. If he lets me kill that crusader, he is so screwed. He is so screwed. You have to heal. You have to heal, my man. Oh, no. No, he heals. Oh, I wish he hadn't. I wish he hadn't healed. Okay, yeah, there goes the corpse. There goes the corpse. Unfortunately, we're back in position one, so eh. But I can go for a heal here. I can go for a heal, and that's what I'm gonna go for. So let's drop the second redeem on that Vestal. Come on, big heal. Ah, it was a bit bigger. The other one was a crit for 44. Kind of I was kind of hoping for another one of those, but yeah, I can't have everything you want. Hmm, this is still pretty decent though. This is still pretty decent. I'm hoping that he goes Bola again instead of moving back to positions, but I feel like at this point he's in quite a, a good position to just start dominating the match again. I can't even resist that, I, th I think. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be a pretty big stun. Oh no, he did a mistake. Maybe he didn't. Yeah, he already used his healer action. I get to go first next round. So unless he goes slam with the abomination and then heals with uh, heals the crusader with the arbalist, this could be wonderful for us. Or he could get a stun on my PH. That could also happen. Come on, please resist that stun. Please resist it. Please, please, please. No. Oh, pretty please isn't working. Yeah, he's being so risky with those stuns. That's like, that's an 85% chance. I've seen those fail. I really like it when those fail, but unfortunately that's not the case today. It's gonna be a bola. Wow. Double crit 15. <laughs> My man. <laughs> My man. Well, his, his bounty hunter is back in a weird position, but he's just gonna move forward now. I, I'm gonna have to feel. Yeah, he's most likely just gonna move forward. It's round eight. Oh, no, he's gonna go mark for death. <laughs> he's gonna move. He's gonna go mark for death. Are you kidding me? 
Mm, I do have that stun rent. He's dropping to zero. Uh, I have to. I have to stun the herbalist, right? Oh, I have. I have two acting characters right now. I could move back with the Vestal, but then she's just gonna die from a come hitter. So that's really not gonna be too good. Yeah, I have to stun with her, or maybe I heal. I heal here. I mean, he's gonna drop to zero, right? Maybe I. Maybe I roll for a crit. I have to stun here. I have to stun that uh, that Arbalist. That's honestly my only play right now. Just stun the Arbalist. He falls down to zero. Oh man, this is uh, this is such a bad situation. Yeah, the Arbalist died like round three, and I've just been kind. I mean, he hasn't been able to clutch out the kill in a while. He's probably gonna get the kill now, though. Yeah, that's the death blow right there. He is gonna get the kill now, but yeah, this has been quite difficult. I'm also going to be unable of getting a kill at this point because he, he's just going to heal whoever I do damage to. Mm, yeah, let's go for that. He's going to heal the Arbalist after that, and they're both going to be fine. And I can't, I can't just go with a punish immediately after that. But maybe I, I can clutch a kill on that Crusader. Yeah, there is a chance that I actually clutch a kill on the Crusader, but it is quite unlikely. It is quite unlikely, unfortunately. I do still have three Exsanguinates, but honestly the Exsanguinates are quite meaningless if he has two healing characters. I, I just can't break through. I just can't break through the Sledge. I need to get rid of one of them, at least. Yeah, at least one of them. So my plan here is going to be to... Uh, the plan is rough. The plan is rough, but I'm going to have to go punish on the Crusader. And then after he heals, it's... Oh, it's rough. It's really rough. But yeah, he's gonna go for a mark for death. Really? Why doesn't he just move forward? <laughs> that bounty hunter has been in position for, for the like past... I don't know how long. It's insane. Hmm, there is another thing I could do. One more pull for all time's sake. One more pull for all time's sake. Let's go for it. Oh, we get the crit. He drops to zero. He's gonna have to heal that. He's gonna have to heal that immediately. Oh, okay, one more pull for all time's sake was the play, my man. Okay, he's gonna go stun for sure. I'm gonna have to resist that stun if I wanna have any chance of winning this damn match. He goes for it. Ah, we don't. We don't resist the stun. And we're gonna drop to this door as well. Oh boy. Oh boy, he, he's so risky. Why did he go for the not confirmed stun instead of going for a heal? Oh my goodness. He's gonna go for that ball that doesn't get the death blow. Yeah, he's definitely gonna heal now, but this isn't looking too good anymore because I lost my action. But I can go exsanguinate after he heals. Oh, I really had to resist that stun there, guys. He's gonna go rally to the flame and the bounty hunter is gonna move forward now. I feel... Oh, he gets a crit heal? Oh, why? Why does he get a crit heal on himself? Come on. Yeah, that is insane. That is insane. Hmm. I'm probably gonna exsanguinate after this. I'm probably gonna exsanguinate one of them. Yeah, my bounty hunter is getting close. He's getting quite close. He's taking a lot of damage and I'm all out of redeems, unfortunately. Oh, I just have to clutch out the kill somewhere. We can do this. It's gonna be a come hitter. I'm gonna drop to this sword from that. I don't have any stun res at this point. Okay. You're gonna have to resist the stun, my man. You're gonna have to resist the stun. That's gonna be our only winning chance here. Okay, we dropped the exsanguinate on the Arbalist. Great heal for 48. Wow. That is nice. That is a nice great heal. Okay. Now, my hope here is that... Um, he messes up. That is that is my hope, is that he messes up. There's a few ways he can mess up. If he goes for a heal, I drop finish him and I'm fine. But I'm gonna drop to this sword though. Yeah, it, it just... If he doesn't mess up... Yeah, see, that's messing up because he can fail the stun. Come on. Oh, my man. He just, he just goes so risky. He has so many things he can do. He can go heal. He can move back two positions with the Arbalist. He can use finish him after he moves back two positions to just ensure a quick kill. But no, he's going to go Bola. He, he's going to go Bola. Ah! He's going to go Bola, but it doesn't matter because my team is just unable to clutch it out, unfortunately. Mm, I could still, I could still get a clutch kill because he doesn't actually have 
finishing character right now, and he's already stunned me. He doesn't have any finishing abilities. I mean, he can move back two positions with the Abomination. That is surprisingly the best play here, as weird as that sounds. It's moving back two positions with the A-bomb. But of course he's not going to go for that. He's going to go be Spile, and he doesn't get the death blow. actually. He doesn't get the death blow. Okay, is there a winning chance here, guys? Is there a winning chance? Because, yeah, he's going to move forward now. I believe, right? Yeah, there he goes. Finally moves forward. But if we manage to get this death blow with the come hitter, we might actually have a winning chance. As small as it is. Oh my god. Ah, uh, Yeah. It's all over. It's all over. You know, if we had gotten that come hitter, then maybe, maybe there was a chance. He doesn't heal first. Please crit. Oh. I was hoping he would get a crit with the finish him and then I could drop a Reign of Sorrows, but no, I, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna move forward and then he's gonna heal himself, he's gonna heal himself, he's gonna stun me, and it's all over. I just wanna see him heal himself, and uh, if he goes for that, then yeah, it's over. He's gonna go for manacles. I could resist it. I resist it. Okay, good. I resist it, but he can heal with both characters, and unfortunately we're still kind of far away from afflictions, so... Yeah, there's no chance of Afflictions just being our savior here, honestly. He's gonna go stunning blow to Madman, he can fail that. No, he doesn't, he doesn't fail. Ah, oh, yeah, it's all over. Well, GG's. Alright, we're gonna go straight into a match number two against Sabaka Lechik. Ah, he's playing something radically different, but so am I, so it looks like he's bringing somewhat of a dodge team, as well as DOT focused, and kind of having region as well. Well, I'm playing something that is purely stress and purely a bunch of pain going through, <laughs> honestly, that's that's kind of the only way I can put it. I do have this repost with the Abomination, but do I want to go repost first, or do I want to go transform first? I'm honestly thinking of going repost first, as weird as that sounds. Hmm, I might go command first, so yeah, I'm actually just gonna go crazy. Instead of going bolster, transform, and then going from there, I'm gonna go command repost first, because it has harvest, he has fenstring vapors, he has hounds Harry. I don't want that to come through. He's gonna go retribution, he doesn't have the spike shield though, so maybe he doesn't have that trinket yet or something. Yeah, he would do potentially like a lot more damage with that repost right there but i guess he does have the hunter's charm which is kind of making up for it a little bit but yeah right now i have the plus 30 accuracy on my a-bomb i don't have the repost trinket you know it's not really a repost trinket but the spike chain on him gives him more damage for range skills gives him more um more blight chance as well as more stun chance instead of bringing the class with the beast we're just going to make him a little bit more survivable which is honestly just as good we're going to go for the hounds area first we have way plus accuracy so we might just hit everyone that is one crit that is good one crit we hit three characters look at that 27 stress on that hound master yeah i am playing chef stress this is kind of the setup i am playing it a little weird today um, I'm playing it with uh, Crimson Hook and Reign of Sorrows on this flagellant instead of going Reclaim and Last Breath Color for, you know, survivability, so this is quite the aggressive flagellant today. Not something that uh, I'd usually bring, but I kind of just felt like it would be, it would be, you know, a little bit of a good change of pace here. Let's drop this Reign of Sorrows, so you're gonna see that with the Crimson Hook and uh, the plus stress that's being applied, this flagellant is uh, just way more, um, way more punishing than the flagellant that I typically bring on this team. So this is going to be quite good. He is going to drop the Rejuvenating Vapors, but honestly, between stress being my win condition and the fact that I'm just applying a lot of DOT, I don't feel like it's going to matter all that much. Uh, what he's doing with that, honestly. I could drop a Bolster here, I could drop a Bellow. I am going to drop a bell because it's going to ruin that Man Arms repast, and I am going to have to walk into that repast because I'm thinking of spamming Beast File. And I'm definitely speaking of thinking of spamming Hans Ares, so I'm just gonna do that. He is gonna go bolster though, so well played by him to go to go with that bolster. I am gonna drop a Reign of Sorrows first, so let's drop that. Hopefully, get both hits. We do. We do get both hits. So a lot of stress being applied, even even with the bolster. And because of the Crimson Hook giving us more bleed chance, more crits, more stress, health versus bleeding, we are just destroying his backline with bleeds and stress. 
So that is quite, quite good for us. He's going to drop another Hansari. Come on, we're fast. Nah, only three. We do get the Blight this time, though, and I guess it is a decent amount of uh, amount of stress. Typically, when you want to go repulse with the, with the Abominations after you transform, so you have the plus damage from transformation, and also with the plus damage from range skills, you, your repulse can hurt for a lot. Ours is just going to be applying Blights and a little bit of stress and kind of like uh, tickling a little bit with that uh, with that pile. Hmm, I am going to drop the Hounds Harry here. His repulse shouldn't do too much damage. Yeah, 7 really isn't that meaningful, honestly. It really isn't that meaningful. My Hound Master has already gotten two Hound Series through. So he, he's probably going to get the third Hound Series through. And after that, he's probably going to finale him, I'd say. But I honestly don't care at that point because I'll just have done potentially more than enough to just uh, start winning this matchup. I'm thinking of knocking back that Doggy. And I am thinking of knocking back that Manor Arms. Both are plays, for sure. But if I knock back that Manor Arms, I get reposted for no reason. So I'm just gonna knock back that Houndmaster. Hmm, doesn't work actually. That, that could be a blessing in disguise, honestly. Uh, the fact that we don't push back that uh, that dog because it means that uh, the, the Jester can't finale immediately. So that is pretty good. That is pretty good. And also he won't be able to use Lacoons, which is also nice. Also quite nice. Now the thing is, he has that finale, and I don't want my A bomb to get finaled. He has two buffs and the Reaper Shroud, so does he do 16 damage? He does like 13 to 23 right now, a little less because of the prod, so he's doing like 12 to 22 or something. He doesn't really finale the Abomination. Yeah, he doesn't really have enough to finale the A bomb, so I mean, he doesn't, right? I mean, if I drop a Bellow, then he definitely doesn't have enough, and uh, I'm fine with that. Unless he goes abusive, <laughs> then he'll have enough. But uh, yeah, he, he most likely won't have enough to finale me, I'd say. So we're gonna get to his afflictions. The thing is, I want to get my Hound's Harry action off before he finales him, but if he finales the Hound's Harry, the doggy right now, I'm not too sad about it. But if he finales the A-bomb, I am quite annoyed because I won't be able to make use of the second transformation. And I really want to because I have Wretch's Cloak, so I'm just gonna be doing so much horror in total from the second transformation that I cannot let this Abomination get finaled. Yeah, I simply cannot let that happen here. And uh, he went Hopeless, so Hopeless, I think, still has the same damage, but does he drop to this one, actually? He's taking 13, but I think he's regening for like 6, so no, he doesn't drop to this one. He isn't dropping. Ah, uh, he does have the finisher, actually. Hmm, this could be less than ideal. I still have 16 HP, so we're fine. In that regard, yeah, we are fine. He does have the finisher, so if I go for a... A Hans Harry right now, I'm gonna get Reposted down to zero and then he could just go finish him. Finish him, I mean Festering Vapors with the finisher. That wouldn't be too good. Uh, this is also a little risky, but I'm gonna go for a Punish here. That's gonna be a dodge. Honestly, that's fine. Uh, it's kind of been coming to me because I do have that Crimson Hook. I didn't have the Command buff. I mean, he does have Monkey Spall, so I, I mean, it's totally fair that he does get that dodge. I was thinking I could go... Reign of Sorrows, but honestly, this repost, even with two debuffs, it could still roll for a crit, could still roll for like 12 potentially, and then finale, and uh, my flash ult is dead. <laughs> I 100% don't want that to happen. Uh, so I'm really just trying to fight that, uh, that chest right now. I could just go D transform manacles. Yeah, that was honestly, that's honestly probably a good play here, just go D transform manacles. Hmm, is that the play actually? Just see transform manacles, or maybe even slam, but what's my hit chance? It's gonna be like 85. Uh, 85. Uh, not great, not terrible. Yeah, that is the definition of not great, not terrible. I'd rather just go manacles here, honestly. I'm just gonna detransform and go manacles on that, uh, that jester. Ooh, the crit! The crit is good. That's uh, way more stress being applied, so that is a really, really nice crit to go through. Even though we didn't need it to get the stun, it's it's still welcome. It's still definitely welcome. Mm, yeah, and also he's not going to buff up his finale because he is getting stunned, so this is, this is a good situation for us. Okay, yeah, he's going to take some nice horror from it, and right now we're going to... We're gonna walk into that repulse, right? Yeah, we are. Let's do it. That's a crit. Yeah, crit for 10. I guess he would have crit for 9 on the fire on 10 because of the content of Absolution. Ah, it was still scary. I think I still did the correct play. Mm, she might go afflicted here. 
Mm, almost. 96 stress. Almost. Not quite afflicted. He's gonna go for the death blow. He gets it. 50-50. The one character that doesn't have protection gets death blowed. Makes sense. Makes sense, honestly. Uh, he has that finale ready to go through. He has that finale totally ready to go through, honestly. Uh, a Bella right now. Oh, I'd love a Hansari right now, but yeah, he's dead. Uh, that bridge is burned. Um, I am thinking of going Defender here. Bellow doesn't do enough stress, right? I, I don't believe it does. It could even miss. Oh, no, I'm going Defender. Screw this, man. I'm going Defender. I'm guarding this Abomination. I'm making sure that he doesn't get the finale through on my A-bomb, because if that happens, there's no second transformation. And no second transformation means a very sad Abomination. A very, very sad Abomination. And a very, very sad Shepherd Doggy. Because this does, in total... I believe it's 32 for each character, so if we do the math, it's like 128 stress. And it's going to be even more because they're at death's door, so the horror is just doing even more stress. It's totally insane how much it actually does. Hmm. Oh, this could be bad. This could be bad, actually. Oh, he moves forward? Really? He stops the finale? What? Why did he do that? And puts me in a position to just get a hit on him. That was, that was risky. That was quite risky. Unfortunately, we missed that antiquarian, but we do still hit the Jester. I mean, look at all that dodge, right? I'm, I'm happy I even hit one of them, honestly. Yeah, this Jester is, uh, is taking some pain right now. Yeah, he's... If I transform, honestly, I'm gonna do enough stress. Oh, he gets the crit, though. He gets the crit, so maybe I don't do enough stress with the transformation horror. No, I actually... I probably do. It's gonna be 16, so it's most likely just gonna be enough. We're gonna transform here, we're gonna go for a rake. Double miss. We actually don't care because it's a transformation horror that we after that we're after here, honestly. So we're just gonna get that transform horror and we're gonna feel quite nice. After this, we're probably gonna go detransform something. Unless he goes virtuous right now. Uh focused. Ah, focused. Mm. Well, it could be worse. It could be worse than focused. But yeah, that is quite bad, honestly. Oh, he misplays. He misplays. I have a feeling that he should have gone regen on that uh, Chester because then he could have kept him alive. Now uh, through that regen, you know, he'd regen back up to like uh, 3 HP or something. Wait, how's his stress back down at 176? Wasn't it 183 just a couple seconds ago? He doesn't take enough stress now. Yeah, because of that bolster. He doesn't take enough stress. I'm gonna have to go bellow and hit the bellow. He's gonna go Hans Harry. He's doing zero damage. <laughs> Yes, that's what we like to see. That is what we like to see. I'm gonna have to hit this fellow or I'm screwed. Okay, we go selfish. That is uh, that is honestly fine here. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Honestly, I just hope it doesn't pass. Yeah, we're gonna have to go bellow here and hit. Okay, we do hit that bellow, so this is good. This is good. No act outs. No act outs for the stress, though. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, if he clicks right now, he's dead. He is totally dead. Does he know? Does he know he can go regen? Look, he didn't know last round. I'm not sure if he knows this round, honestly. Yeah, the thing is, what does the focused virtue do? Well, obviously it has the normal virtue stuff, so all his resistances just got, like, uh, hyper-buffed by 25%. And other than that, it, um, it can give other characters plus 10 accuracy and plus 10% crit, which is pretty decent, but it's not gonna help him that much here. Okay, that's okay. That's the gesture gone. That's more stress being applied on that antiquarian. Okay, that is a pretty good outcome for us. That is a really good outcome, and I guess it, I think it does give him ten accuracy. I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe it gives him accuracy and crit. Maybe it doesn't. I I honestly don't know. So don't uh, don't focus too much on my info because I'm I really don't know. Yeah, I honestly really don't know here. I could go punish. It's a fifty fifty. Mm, is he taking enough stress? Uh, that regen is gonna out... No, 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 he's only gonna regen for three next round, actually. Mm, I might only do two bleeds, though. I might only do two in terms of bleed. Yeah, that's most likely. So, what was I thinking of right there? Well, I was thinking of how much DOT would actually be next round, because he could, if he could DOT out of this store, he would be alive. 
But, um, you know, I was thinking like, okay, the points are going to go away and the regen, three points of regen are going to go away. So I would still be winning in terms of bleed. So it'd be four against three, but I'm not sure if it's going to be four bleed for two rounds or if it's four bleed for one round and then two bleed for the next. So I was uh, kind of scared of that going quite poorly for us. Okay, we do still have... Wow, that's a lot of damage on this Abomination. Okay, he's out of this door now, but he's still Pelu debuffed, which is good. So that's kind of like the bane of Antiquarians, is not being able to, to actually do damage to the stress teams. It feels really bad when that happens, I'm not gonna lie. It feels really bad when you're an Antiquarian player, and even though you run Tears of the Lost to resist the Pelu debuffs, you end up not being able to resist them, and then when you have to get the death blows, you're doing zero damage. It just feels horrible to, to play the Antiquarian at that point, because her base damage is like, it's 6 to 11, and this is uh, reducing it by 80%, so it's just it's just perfect for like her being at the store, reducing some, some of her damage, and then there's like just a touch of protection, and she's already useless. It, uh, it really feels great when you're playing against Antiquarians, and that's exactly what happens. I am just gonna go for a heal here, I mean, there's no point going Exsanguinate, because I might just get reposted, and my hit chance is also garbage. And so I'm just gonna go for a heal on this... Mm, what do I go for? Let's go for the Mana Arms, because he can't heal himself. Let's just drop that on the Mana Arms, keep him alive for a while longer. And now the same Abomination is still gonna be chilling. Honestly, if he wants to win this match, he's gonna have to get a lot of lucky dodges with that Antiquarian. Yeah, he did go with that virtue, so that is that is that virtue really is vouching for him. But um I still feel like this is a good situation for me. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be our, our affliction of the man arms. This affliction could be could be terrible if it's a bad one. Okay, selfish. Yeah, I guess it could be worse. It could be worse than selfish. You know, I was really hoping that it wouldn't be either abusive or or um what's it called? I was really hoping that it would be neither abusive nor paranoid because the act outs could just stun the other characters and I would hate to see that. I would totally hate to see that. Uh, he's only guarded for one more round, but should I drop Bellows? Mm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop Bellows here, honestly. Just to just to get the Manor Arms closer to that stress. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Oh, that's a pretty nice act out, actually. A little bit of stress being applied on Antiquarian. We love to see that. Going for a stun here is pointless. I'm just going to move back and potentially use the Beast Smile next round. His repulse is kind of uh, kind of meaningless at this point because he has two Bellow debuffs and he's fearful. So fearful is minus 25% damage. So that Man at Arms is pretty much not hurting at all with his Retribution repulse. So we, we, we really don't care all that much. I'm just going to go Beast Smile through it anyway. After that, I'm probably going to go Command, so I can hit both the Reign of Sorrows and the Beast Fowler pass on that Antiquarian. He is going to go Regen. Is that really the play here? I, I don't know. I'm getting closer to, to Affliction, so I'm really not too sure that's the play, you know? I'm really not too sure that's the play. I'm actually going to go Command first. Yeah, I'm gonna go Command first, so I actually hit the Beast File, and then I'm gonna go Beast File, and then I'm gonna go Reign of Sorrows. I wonder if he goes Guard, honestly. Yeah, I wonder if he goes Retribution Guard, just so he can funnel my damage into that Repost. But I don't think it's that scary, honestly. I, I'm really not that scared of that Repost, considering all my characters have protection as well. Oh, it actually crits for 8. Okay, that's a little more than I expected, honestly. Still, doesn't even bring me down to this door, and doesn't do the bleed from the sp from the shield spike. Yeah, he doesn't have shield spike. Really unfortunate for him not to have shield spike. Okay, we get that. We do the bleeds. That's nice. That's nice. All right. Surprisingly, I did 14 bleed, 14 stress. Actually, quite surprisingly, huh? Not quite sure how that happened. Maybe the crimson hook actually applied the the stress after the bleeds. Hmm. Yeah, because he does have Tears of the Lost, and he does have that bolster buff, so I was kind of expecting him to take a little less stress, but I'm I'm not complaining. I'm 100% not complaining. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to guard. No, he's going to go Rampart. Why? Why are you going Rampart, my man? Well, he actually gives the, the Antiquarian 8 accuracy. Good one. Yeah, good one. I, I like it. Hmm. I have an idea here. I have an idea. If I get a good Reign of Sorrows hit, she might be dead. Oh no, crit is too much. Yeah, crit is too much. I, I force her to have a heart attack. That, that wasn't the plan. My plan was to do like 4 damage and the bleed and make her go to like 195 stress. 
So what would happen is that um, she would fall to that store once she acted, and then she would take the strides from falling to that store and she would die. So actually getting the crit there wasn't too good for us. He's gonna go protect me, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. I thought he was gonna eventually just uh, guard that antiquarian, prevent Pain from going on to her. And also, that, that man of arms just got 10% crit and 10 accuracy for 4 rounds. So you can expect him to actually do a lot of damage at this point. Um, what should I go for first? Should I go Bella or should I heal myself? I don't know. Hmm. I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna go Bella, or, or not, I'm gonna pass, I guess that's also a possibility. Uh, go be, goes be Smile, okay, okay, I guess it could be worse. He could have gone stun on the Manor Arms and just oofed himself, really. That would definitely have been worse. Hmm, now she's in position 2, okay, I could go for a stun, honestly. But I feel like my method of killing the Centiquarian is going to be through two bellows and she's dead. Oh, okay, that actually drops me. Actually drops me to that store. <laughs> Did he take two stress in return? Yeah, look at those crits. Oh, the plus crit chance from the focus buff. Man, I actually like to see it. I actually like to see it. I feel like this is a really good combo he has going right now. It's actually quite, uh, quite cool. Quite a cool combo he has right now. Really sucks he doesn't have the shield spike to get even more crits. Oh yeah, there it goes. Plus 20 crits. Oh my god. Every action I do, it's gonna be a crit or pass. I think focused gives crit. I mean, Antiquarian has Antiquarian luck, which already means that she's critting every other round. At least every other round. So, this uh, this is kind of explained, but... Yeah, I think Focus in, is giving him crit and accuracy naturally. I'm, I'm not too sure, though. Uh, that crit means that he's healing stress, actually, so my bellows are gonna be a little less potent, honestly. I mean, no, they're gonna be just as potent, but they will, they're gonna be... they're gonna have a harder time getting that kill. Especially if I miss the 90s. Was that... what, what was the chances of hitting that? I was... I was lucky. Also, if I didn't have this flagell here just being an absolute menace, uh, this could be... This could be kind of difficult. I'm gonna drop a punish here. The only repulse is for five. We're fine. We are fine here guys, we're fine. After this we're hopefully gonna drop the test door with the flash, heal the rest of the other characters and then drop a redeem and we'll be totally chill here. That Bellow is debuffing the Manor Arms quite well. He moves back. The thing is, uh, he might have done a mistake here. He might have done a mistake going for that Rampart because that card's gonna go away now. That card is gonna go away now. I am at the store though so I have to heal. I can't go Exsanguinate because I'll likely miss. Uh, I could go Manacles. What's my hit chance? Oh, I'm selfish. I might pass. No, I have to go for heal here. I, I can't punish him. I really can't punish him here, even though I wanted to. I, I just can't pull it through. Because he did let the guard go out, but I'm, my chances are just so unreliable right now that I can't justify going aggressive on that Antiquarian. Because if I go Xang and miss, I die. If I go... If I go A-bomb... Could, uh, I could pass, I could go for a stun and it could miss. I mean, there's just so many things that can go poorly right now that it's actually insane. Uh, I am gonna 45 dodge? What? What does the Men Arms have 45 dodge? What the fuck? Fearful? Both guard buffs? 50 prot as well? What the hell is going on here? Okay. I'm gonna go command here. It's gonna give me some much needed buffs. This freaking men arms an antiquarian. I'm trying to get rid of them, but it's being difficult. It's being quite difficult. I'm gonna attrition him out with Beast Vile. <laughs> Crit repost. <laughs> Doing five stress with Beast Vile. Ah, uh, at least it does the blight though, so eventually I'm gonna get him down to zero. Eventually I'm gonna get him down to zero. Fortunately, he can't use Rejuvenating Papers anymore because all the other corpses just dissipated to the winds. So, yeah, this is, this is interesting. He does have one more Protect Me. Yeah, that thing is limited in terms of uses. Okay, there he goes. One more round and he's gonna fall down to zero from, from the damage. Okay, he's gonna go Retribution. That's a heal on the stress. That is, uh, that is honestly fine here. I do have the plus accuracy, so I'm just gonna drop a Bellow. Yeah, now we hit, now we hit the Antiquarian, resist this. 
a little bit more stress being applied. Oh, this is rough for him. This is really rough. What does he do now? What does he do now? <laughs> Gives him another buff. Plus 30 crit. Oh, his crit chance is probably going to be like a 50-50 right now. He goes protect me again. Now the thing is here, he can't go faster in Vapors because he dies from the repulse, but he's still going to die from the Bellas, so not all is good for him. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to get crit. Only four though, only four crit. Yeah, that really isn't too much. That really isn't too much, my man. And uh, I'm gonna drop a punish on that man at arms. Another crit for four. <laughs> Could you imagine if his retribution actually hurt? Like if he was abusive or something? Yeah, if he, if he was abusive, this would be so much better for him, but he isn't. He isn't, fortunately for us. Yeah. If only he was abusive. Does more stress. Oh, that's rough. That is rough. That is rough for him. This man at arms and these freaking crit. Look at that. Plus 30% crit chance. Wow. Feels retribution on my character. Oh, I actually do zero damage. Ooh, okay. Okay, I see how it is. I see how it is. Could he do zero damage though? I'm not too sure. Well, I'm just gonna go for the confirmed kill here. It's the best play you can do. I'm sorry, Antiquarian. I was kind of rooting for you, but it, it's not going to go through. I actually wonder if he even does damage with his repulse right now. Probably not, right? Probably not, actually, I'd say. He stuns the corpse. Abomination is like, no, Shep, don't kill me on that man arms. That's stupid. Let's see. Yeah, he does zero damage at this point because of the Bell of Evos. Yeah, sucks to be you, man arms. Sucks to be you. I mean, these characters are kind of having a hard time clutching it out, but the flagellant was always here to just ensure victory, because, I mean, Exsanguinate is a thing, right? Uh, for him to win, he would need to have way more dodge on that Antiquarian. I would have to kind of get unlucky enough to... I would have to get unlucky enough to just miss a couple of Exsanguinates on him. Right now, that's just going to be a death one. That's going to be all she wrote for Sabaka. So I hope you guys enjoyed the matches, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.